Do you really need to download an app in order to own it? I'm not being philosophical. Can one truly ever own anything? I'm of course talking about Google's instant apps. So as the name suggests, instant apps are apps that run instantly with no need to install them, or at least they install very quickly and quietly in the background, and then they uninstall as soon as you're finished with them. It just means you can run any app with no need to install it on your device and take up loads of space. So for instance, if you're rummaging around in the dark and you need yourself a flashlight app, but you don't want to install it because you know you don't live in a mine, then you can just click run, use the flashlight, and then when you're done, it'll be gone and there'll be no sign of it. But the usefulness of instant apps goes beyond this because you can also launch a particular part of an app using this feature, and that's what will be particularly interesting. So all you need is a link, and this will then launch you straight into a particular part of that application or a particular activity. This could be very useful for a shopping app, for instance. So if you want to buy something in particular on a website, you click the link, it opens up in the app with no need to install it, and you can see the product right there, ready to buy it through in-app purchases. There's many more potential uses for this as well. The example that Google gave at Google I.O. was a parking meter. I walk up to a parking meter and I need to pay. I don't have the parking app on my phone. But what if I could tap my phone on the meter and with NFC, it brings up the parking app immediately? I choose how long I want to park and pay with Android Pay. Simple and easy. You can also send these links to each other. So in theory, if I'm playing a crossword puzzle, I could send you a link over WhatsApp and you'd be able to launch a particular puzzle in that app without even needing to install the particular application. Businesses should be super excited about this because it massively increases the discoverability of apps. It means that you can share an app or an experience that you're having with a friend and they can do likewise with no need to install it, no barrier to entry. So are there any limitations to instant apps? Of course there are. Firstly, the individual aspects of the app that run as instant apps can't be any bigger than four megabytes. That means that rich multimedia, videos, 3D games are pretty much off the cards. Of course, if you do want to include a video in your instant app, then you can just stream that from elsewhere but it means that something like a 3D game is gonna be a lot more difficult. 2D games should be fine, certainly puzzles as mentioned, and maybe 2D games at a stretch as long as you keep those file sizes down. In the future though, it sounds like Google's certainly interested in supporting games as instant apps, and they've said, games are highly specialized categories of apps and often have unique tools, large assets, and high performance requirements. Even so, we are interested in exploring game use cases. So yeah, in future we might see 3D games like Asphalt 8, running as instant apps, but for now, that's not possible. Most of the features that are available to any native app will be available to instant apps as well. That includes things like the camera, like I said, location awareness, in-app purchases, vibration, phone contacts, but there are some things that are currently not available. That includes the ability to change your phone's wallpaper, to send push notifications, or create background services. When you use any feature of an instant app like this, you'll need to grant it permission, just as you would have done with a regular app. So now developers are probably wondering just how much of a headache this is going to be for them to implement. The good news is that as of Android Studio 3.0, instant apps will be supported out of the box and there'll be lots of features to hopefully make this process as smooth as possible. This includes App Links Assistant, which will make it easy for you to insert those links straight into your app so that you know which URLs are going to launch which parts of your app. And this will edit your manifest files for you. This will work very similar to Deep Links currently. The difficult part is going to be the modularization of your app. So you're going to have to break your app down into lots of individual smaller chunks. Obviously, these might usually represent activities within your app, but they're going to work as separate modules called feature modules. You're going to have a base feature module, and this will be the kind of most important code and resources that all of the smaller features will need. Then you'll have the individual feature modules, which can run as instant apps. So when a user goes to a particular page within your app, they're going to install just that feature module, but that feature module is going to be reliant on some of the code and resources that are in your base module. Google assures us that this process of breaking your app down into feature modules and base feature modules should take no more than a day for a basic app project. But obviously, if you've got a much bigger scale project, then it could take significantly longer. And developers are also going to have to consider some best practices in terms of the way they design their apps. So Google says you mustn't continuously pester your users to install the full app. You mustn't use splash screens in between your individual activities and you mustn't branch your UI. So the idea is that your instant app should be seamless, whether or not the user is launching them from a website or whether they're using them as part of your larger app. And that's why you mustn't have anything that breaks the flow 
of that experience. So if you want to have a go with instant apps yourself right now, then you can do, but you're going to need either a Nexus device or a Pixel device. If you do have one of those devices, then head over into your settings, go to personal, then Google, and then services, and then toggle on instant apps. You'll then need to select yes, I'm in to say that yes, you are in. Then head over to the Play Store and you should see that some apps already have this feature enabled and you can give those a go. Examples include Buzzfeed and Wish. The rest of us are going to have to wait, but Google says that this feature is going to be coming to Android versions dating all the way back to Jelly Bean. So millions of us will be able to get in on the fun. So what do you think of instant apps? Do you think this is a useful idea? Is it something you can see yourself using? If you're a developer, do you think you're going to start creating instant apps or converting your old apps into instant apps? Personally, I think this has got a lot of potential. I really like the idea of being able to share experiences from within apps with my friends simply via a link like I would do any web page. I also think it's going to make the experience of browsing the web a lot more interactive and media rich. I think that as connections increase in speed and become more ubiquitous, we're going to see more and more streaming of our apps and experiences. As cloud computing becomes more of a viable option, I think we'll eventually not even download and install the app, but rather just stream it from a server somewhere. Eventually, we might use all of our apps and all of our games without having to download a thing. When that happens, it'll greatly reduce the need for high powered processing in the devices that we carry with us. It'll change the face of hardware and software of course, we're a little away from that yet, but I think that instant apps are definitely an interesting peek into that potential future. So thanks, Sam, for watching, guys. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please consider leaving a like, maybe share it around, and let us know in the comments down below what you think of instant apps. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to be notified of future videos, then hit that bell button as well. And of course, check out androidauthority.com, for we are your source for all things Android.